The VW camper van, or as it was known, the Type 2, came out in 1950 and has since very much risen in popularity. Now, the Germans thought it would be a great idea to bring out a fully electric variant of it. And here is the ID Buzz, which we have on review. Now, at the time of filming and in the UK, it can be found just shy of £59,000. That is, without adding options or indeed going for the more expensive trim level. Now, in this review, you can see if it's actually worth its price tag and how it compares to some of the alternative all-electric vehicles that you can find out there on the market. Now, indeed, at the time of filming and in the UK, there is only two trim levels, which are actually pretty steep in terms of their overall asking price, whereby you have got the Life and then also the Style Trim, which we have on review. Now, both of them are equipped with the same 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that is 82 kilowatt hour gross. Now, that's actually pretty disappointing given the fact that the smaller ID4 and ID5 have the same battery pack configuration. It just seems like Volkswagen have kind of copy and pasted. It would have been great to see north of 90 kilowatt hour with using the same Volkswagen cell technology. Aside from this, there is no heat pump that comes fitted as standard, at least not at the time of filming and in the UK, on the ID Buzz. And thus, seriously, does affect the overall range, specifically in colder climates, such as like we have in the UK let alone if you're going to be going on winter testing in Norway. Now here the manufacturer claims that you'll get roughly 255 miles on the WLTP cycle and while we weren't too far off in terms of our mixed driving tests at roughly 210 to 230 miles it is quite a far stretch off its siblings and by that we mean the ID4 hitting north of 260 miles while the ID5 hitting north of 300 miles and indeed being class leading when it comes to the all electric SUV segment. Then, of course, you have got its competitors, which do also hit north of 230 to 240 miles, let alone some breaking the 300 mile barrier. So, for example, you have also got the likes of the Tesla Model Y, which does come actually pretty close. Effectively, what we're trying to say over here is that the range for a vehicle of its size and class should have been a lot better. And it's quite disappointing to see here that Volkswagen hasn't incorporated a bigger battery pack, nor included a heat pump, and or included a vehicle that comes in at a cheaper price point. Now for you to be as efficient as possible and to recoup energy back into the battery pack, you'll want to enable a degree of regenerative braking. And here there's only one mode and it's B mode. And unfortunately there's no means of having a one pedal drive. Nonetheless, in B mode, which we're going to initiate now, you'll be able to see that the vehicle does decelerate pretty quickly, at least when we lift off the accelerator pedal, but it will still roll at roughly six to seven miles an hour. Therefore meaning that you do not have a one pedal drive like you'd find on some rival alternatives. Now, of course, if you want to rear turn energy at a much more rapid rate, you can plug it in. And here the charging port is located towards the rear and on the driver's side. Now it's worth pointing out that the charging door does actually not obstruct the door opening. In other words, the sliding door when opened and closed can still be operated while the vehicle is charging. A small little point, but one that we thought we should highlight just in case, for example, you've got people sat at the back and then you initiate a charge, then, well, you don't have to worry about them actually being trapped into the vehicle and or damaging the charge port by sliding the door open. Now via the CCS port, you can take up to 170 kilowatts of input, which is certainly impressive, therefore allowing you to go from roughly 5 to 80% in a mere 30 minutes. Now the vehicle does also have an 11 kilowatt onboard charger, which will certainly be appreciated by certain individuals, and therefore means to go from 0 to 100% will take you roughly 7.5 hours. Of course, it will take a lot longer on a 7 kilowatt wall box, or indeed if you're simply plugging it in via a regular 3-pin socket. Now aside from all of this, we would also like to point out that this vehicle is fitted with bi-directional charging, although we've actually got no means of actually testing it because we don't have an adapter that was provided. And from our experience of reviewing the VW ID5, which was supposedly the first vehicle from the Volkswagen Group to integrate bi-directional charging, yet again over here, we weren't able to test it. So it seems to be a feature that is in the works and or will be coming out very soon. So moving swiftly on, we get onto performance. And here there's a rear mounted motor, which combines with the 77 kilowatt hour battery pack to dispatch 150 kilowatts of power, and that equates to 201 horsepower, and gives you 310 newton meters of torque. We had it tested from zero to 60 miles an hour using RaceLogic's V-Box port at just 9.3 seconds. Indeed, it's actually pretty exhilarating when you put your foot down to the metal, and it's quite surprising to see such a big vehicle actually go pretty fast. Now, as for top speed, it is capped at 90 miles an hour, and that will certainly suffice for a lot of consumers 
consumers, although might leave certain people disappointed, namely those frequenting the Autobahn. So what about when it comes to its handling characteristics? Well, it's no surprise to learn that the vehicle does suffer from body lean, given the fact that its unladen weight is rated at 2,500 kg. Furthermore, the driver's feel isn't quite there, at least it doesn't compete with the likes of the BMW iX3 and Dragoir I-Pace, which really do shine in this department. But that's not to say that the ID Buzz isn't fun to drive, quite the opposite. Given the fact that the vehicle operates on a rear-wheel drive configuration, it means that when you're chucking it around on windy country roads, you'll still have a degree of excitement. And furthermore, you won't suffer from any front wheel spin or any sort of torque steer either, like you'd find on some rival SUVs. Indeed, the ID Buzz is certainly fun, and one that would certainly give a joy to a lot of people's faces. Now, aside from all of this, we would like to point out that the vehicle suspension system has been tuned to perfection, at least in our opinion. See here, Volkswagen has opted for a soft setup instead of one that is a little bit stiffer. And of course, here it won't compete with adaptive air suspension systems, but given the class of the vehicle, it is actually very impressive. It soaks up all the anomalies, potholes and speed bumps, specifically when you're pottering around town, and is ideal for your long motorway cruises as well. Now, what also constitutes in having a good driving experience is low cabin noise. And in the grander scheme of things, the ID Buzz is actually pretty well insulated. Although it's worth considering that you will hear road noise creeping in from the tires. And when you're traversing at higher speeds, you will hear wind deflecting off the Apola. It is also worth pointing out that if you're going over uneven terrain, there's a little bit of low end resonance that can be heard throughout the cabin. Now, if you want a detailed breakdown of the sound measurements that we recorded within the ID Buzz, make sure you check out our detailed audio review that can be found up on your pop banner down in the description below or indeed in the pinned comments. Now this does actually perfectly lead us onto its audio system. And here as standard and at the time of filming, there's only a nine speaker configuration with no upgrade ability. Now we say that because there are certain cutouts throughout the cabin which are completely empty from the ones that are found in the boot to the ones which are found within the front doors. Nonetheless here, in terms of the audio configuration, you've got five speakers at the front of the cabin. And yes, unlike the entry level ID3 when we reviewed it, there are four speakers towards the back, which is definitely appreciated. Again, more details about the audio system on our dedicated audio review. Now this does lead us on to the use of technology within the cabin and here at the center of the dashboard you have a flat 10 inch display. It's a shame that it's not actually angled towards the driver which would have made it a little bit more intuitive to use. Now you can upgrade it to a 12 inch display like we have fitted on this press vehicle but it will set you back a whopping £1,560 as it's comprised within the infotainment package plus option. Now as for the display itself it's very vivid intuitively laid out although sometimes can be a little bit sluggish specifically when integrated with third-party mobile operating systems such as Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which by the way are pleasantly supported over a wired and wireless connection, which will certainly be appreciated by a lot of consumers. However, what isn't as good is the use of capacitive sliders that are found just beneath the display. Indeed, over here, if you want to adjust your climate or indeed adjust the volume, then you're going to have to faff around with these buttons. Given the fact that they're not actually backlit either, it means that when you're driving at night, you won't actually be able to see what you're adjusting. Of course, you could potentially hazard a guess as to where they're placed, but nonetheless, this is very much cumbersome. Elsewhere, you do not have any sort of physical buttons for your climate controls, and therefore you're going to have to faff around with the infotainment system which isn't exactly the best. As for the steering wheel you equally have these haptic and capacitive touch slider buttons which again do not make too much sense. Specifically if you're going to be cornering at speed then what you'll find is that you might accidentally initiate a certain function which is really not appreciated while on the move. Now on that note behind the steering wheel you do have a small little instrument cluster which can be customized to a certain degree and better still also integrates third-party mobile apparatus systems in other words via navigation data and in this respect means that you can check your navigation data straight from the instrument cluster. It is a shame that the ID Buzz given the overall price point that it comes in at and in comparison to some of its competitors does not integrate a head-up display be it of course a standard or indeed as an option. It's something that we certainly would have liked to see as it would have further bolstered the overall security and safety credentials of the vehicle. So moving swiftly on we get onto its interior design and here it's kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand it's quite practical whereby it's very easy to wipe down due to the use of hard plastic but on the flip side due to its price point it really can't compete with some premium all-electric SUVs out there on the market for example let's say a Jaguar I-Pace or BMW iX3 or even an Audi e-tron it certainly does not live up to the billing now we'd be intrigued to know what you make of the interior design at this price point of the ID Buzz in comparison to some of its rivals down in the comment section below 
Now, as for the seats, they very much match with the exterior design. And that is, of course, if you do go for a different paint coat, which we'll touch upon very shortly. But in our case, we've got these Miwo cloth materials. Now, they're very nice and snazzy looking, although we did find that they are actually quite toasty on your backside. And that is, of course, if you're not even integrating any of the seat warmers, at least at the front of the cabin. So it's just something to be mindful of. If you live in a hotter country, you might want to actually try out the vehicle first on a sort of hot climate to see how the seats actually Actually feel to you because in our experience while driving in the UK which is exactly the warmest country in the world we did actually find that it was somewhat a little bit uncomfortable specifically on longer drives. Now while we're not too impressed in certain departments what will really stand out in comparison to other electric vehicles on the market is the sheer amount of space that you've got within the cabin. Now at the front, the door bins are absolutely humongous, allowing you to fit many goods. Then you've also got the glove box, an area found just above it with a non-slip material. Then as for the driver, you have got a wireless charging bay that comes integrated as standard. Two USB Type-C ports, which allow you to charge or indeed simultaneously connect up to the infotainment system. And then you've also got a small little area for your wireless key fob, which is found next to the door. Then as for the center console, it's actually also removable, which is actually quite rare and quite unique to say the least, but nonetheless, it's certainly appreciated as it allows a degree of customization. The center console unit at the top is very handy because it's got these customizable little bays and even you've also got an ice scraper that comes integrated as standard. And then you've got two areas that open up at the front and rear of the center console, allowing you to further put some certain goods away from prying eyes. Frankly, at the front of the cabin, we've got no complaints whatsoever. Now, as for the rear of the cabin, you have got the door bins, which certainly will suffice. And then you've got a USB Type-C port that provides charge for your rear occupants. There's one within each of the rear doors. Although it's worth noting here that Volkswagen do claim that you've got four USB Type-C ports, although we fail to locate two of them. Anyway, past this, you have got a missing armrest compartment. In other words, you don't have a retractable area due to a 60-40 rear split folding design. But thankfully, you have got these little tray tables that can pop up, which are found towards the rear portion of the front seats. These will certainly be useful for kids, for example. But if you're placing any sort of heavy goods on it, you might want to think twice because they actually are pretty flimsy and made out of plastic. We wish Volkswagen had potentially upped the quality in this department, given the overall price point of the ID Buzz. Now, aside from storage within the cabin, we have to, of course, talk about its key selling point, and that is boot capacity. Now, you have got a manually operated tailgate in the life trim, or if you add 225 pounds in terms of an option, you'll get an electronically operated tailgate. And this does also come fitted as standard in the style trim, which we have on review. Now, to operate it, there's a button found just above the number plate within the cabin and via your remote. Now, pressing it, you'll have to do some sort of a matrix type of feel like this, just in order that you don't actually hit your head on that. And yes, um, Keanu Reeves, if you need a doppelganger or anything like that, I'm right here. I've been practicing that for years. But anyway, on a more serious note, you have got a very high opening tailgate. I'm just under six foot, no problems whatsoever. I could potentially even jump. Better still, the button's very accessible and you've got this handy little lever to yank it down if you so wish. Now, in terms of the space that you've got with the seats up, it sits at a whopping 1,121 litres. This extends up to 2,123 litres if you pop down the seats. Indeed, it's absolutely impressive. Now here, the rear seat Seats have got a 60-40 split folding design and as you might have noticed there's no integrated ski latch which will be a potential disappointment to certain individuals given the sheer amount of space available in the ID Buzz we don't suspect it's going to be a problem. Furthermore the seats can actually be brought forwards revealing a little bit of an area just behind them and therefore being actually pretty handy if you want to let's say store the retractable and removable boot load cover. Now on that note, the loading bay is flat, at least on the style trim, thanks to the inclusion of the multi-flex boards. This can be actually added for a 675 pound option in the life trim. Now, why is this of importance? Well, because of course, if you want to place a mattress and you want to be camping within the ID Buzz, then this actually becomes plausible. We say that because if you do go for the life trim and of course don't opt for the £675 option, then you'll have a pretty steep step towards the rear seats. Therefore, you do not have a flat loading bay. Now elsewhere, if you're gonna be sleeping within the vehicle, you'll be placed to know there's certain cutouts found towards the rear of the vehicle, including an area to place, let's say, a water bottle or a coffee cup. Then you have also got a 12 volt socket that can be pretty handy to provide some additional power. 
Now, it is worth pointing out here that there is no underfloor compartment storage nor a frunk, in other words, a storage compartment within the front of the vehicle. But given the sheer amount of space that's available, we're sure that you'll be able to place your charging cables conveniently somewhere else within the cabin or, of course, within the boots. Now, very much like its unique boot, you have also got a ridiculous amount of space for your rear occupants. Indeed, here, legroom and headroom as someone who's just under six foot is an absolute non-issue. I think here, or even if I was seven foot tall and playing in the NBA, I still wouldn't have any sort of problems. Now, of course, here you have also got a flat rear footwell design, and the same could be said at the front of the cabin, and that's due to the fact of having the batteries on the floor and not having a transmission tunnel, which is the same that could be said about some of its competitors and also some other fully electric alternatives. Frankly here, at least when it comes to comfort, it is absolutely class leading. Now, it's very easy to get in and out of the rear of the cabin due to the sliding doors, although it's worth noting that if you do want electric doors, it is available as an option in the style model only, for a whopping £1,055. It's also available within a different pack as well. Now, as for the seats themselves, they're all very comfortable, although do bear in mind what I did mention before in terms of them feeling a little bit toasty, at least on your backside. But as for the front of the cabin, you've got manual adjustment only. Now, if you do want electric seats with a memory function, it will come in at roughly £3,150 to £3,360, which is absolutely ridiculous to say the least. Nonetheless, both front seats as standard are heated, so is the steering wheel, the windscreen and the rear window, all of which are certainly appreciated. As for the front seats, you also have got armrests that come integrated as standard and they double up on the style trim, therefore giving you that sort of cruiser type of feel. Now, while that's all very good, one of the complaints we have of the ID Buzz, including some of the other vehicles from the Volkswagen Group, is the fact that you've got a pressure sensor found within the driver's seat. Now, it is very intuitive to jump in and out of the vehicle like you do for for example on a Tesla and Volvo but unfortunately here if time you step outside the vehicle will completely power down and yes that includes the infotainment system and the climate controls. Now the only way to override that is for you to reach over to the steering column and make sure that the key fob is within the cabin. Sure that's very easy if you're the front passenger but if you're at the rear then it's going to be quite cumbersome to do that. You're going to have to reach over and faff around with it and it just isn't exactly all that intuitive. A simple start stop button would have been better or for example an option through the infotainment system that would have been able to disable this functionality would have been appreciated. Now, aside from the pressure sensor, we would like to point out that at the time of filming and in the UK, the ID Buzz is only available as a five-seater. Indeed, there's no seven-seater option, which is quite a shame given the fact that there's a lot of space to be played around with and Volkswagen are potentially missing a trick because there's a very finite number of seven-seater fully electric vehicles on the market. So hopefully that will come in at a later date so that it's been rumoured at least. But again, at the time of filming, it's somewhat of a complaint that we have because that option would have been certainly appreciated for certain individuals. Now, while we've got complaints about certain features within the ID Buzz, we can't deny its overall sex appeal. Yes, it looks absolutely stunning. No matter which way you look at it, it very much is reminiscent of the original camper van, but then it has, of course, a modern twist to it. At the front, you've got that bubble-shaped look with those ID lights and a massive Volkswagen logo slapped right on top of it. Towards the side, you've got a bit of a sportier flair, thanks to the inclusion of body-coloured wheel arches and 19-inch alloys on the life, 20-inch alloys which are pictured on the style, and 21-inch alloys that can be picked as an option. As for the rear, it's not garish in the slightest and certainly keeps up with its predecessor's design. Here, we've got no complaints whatsoever, at least when it comes to its exterior look. But it is worth considering that in terms of your colour options, silver comes as standard. There's also a single tone finish that starts from £300. However, if you want the two-tone colour finish, such as the candy white and bay leaf green that we have fitted, it'll cost you a whopping £2,790. Now, elsewhere, we would like to point out that if you're going to be towing, you have got 1,000 kilograms of capabilities, at least if it's a 12% brake trailer. If, however, it's unbraked, this will drop down to 700 50 kilograms. If you're going to be regularly towing something, you might want to consider the electric tow bar option that comes in at £980. Now, in case you're wondering about its roof capacity, well, unfortunately, we do not have an official claim. We couldn't find it in terms of the spec sheet, the brochure, nor in terms of the online configurator. But one can only imagine there's some sort of roof capacity given that there are certain holes that have been drilled out for roof rails. And furthermore, we've seen certain pictures surface online about the vehicle actually fitting, let's say, a surfboard. 
but just don't take our word for it. Make sure you double check this with your dealer in case it's something of a feature that you're certainly looking forward to. Now moving past this exterior design, this does actually perfectly lead us on to safety. And here you'll be pleased to know that the ID Buzz scored five out of five stars on Euro NCAP's rigorous crash test. It actually did particularly well when it comes to adult and child occupancy tests. And given that the vehicle has got a pretty small front crumple zone, it is certainly impressive to say the least. Now aside from this, we can of course talk about the driver assistance systems, which will aid in terms of the overall safety. Now we did mention before that there is no head up display, which is slightly a shame, but in terms of the standard driver assistance systems that come built in, they're pretty impressive. You've got adaptive cruise control with stop and go technology, which does actually work well, although we would probably suggest disabling the roadside recognition because every now and then while you're driving on the motorway, it will somehow oddly pick up a 30 or let's say 40 mile an hour zone and suddenly decelerate you from 70 miles an hour, which is really not appreciated. Then you've got lane keep assist and lane departure warning amongst the other plethora of driver assistance systems, such as for example, emergency brake assist and forward collision monitoring. Now, if you do want to upgrade the experience, there is a 1,425 pound option, which effectively adds blind spot monitoring system with side assist and a few semi-autonomous technologies. Aside from this, there is also area view, which effectively gives you 360 degree vision of the vehicle, therefore preventing you to potentially curb your rims. This does actually perfectly lead us onto visibility. And the ID Buzz is absolutely excellent in this department. At the front, the side, and at the rear, whereby you've also got a rear wiper. In fact, it also the rear view camera, which comes integrated as standard, also has a small little washer, which is certainly handy if you're going to be traversing, let's say, muddy terrain. Aside from that, you've also got front and rear parking sensors. Now, in terms of the visibility, it truly is excellent. And I can't quite emphasize this enough because here Volkswagen have even optimized where the B pillars are and have integrated a window, therefore making it easy when you're going around, let's say, a roundabout. And also, given the fact that the driver's position is actually propped up pretty high, it means it's very easy to check around your surroundings and therefore makes you feel at ease, even though you are driving a pretty chunky vehicle with a three meter long wheelbase. Now, on that note over here, the vehicle's turning circle is rated at just 11.1 meters and therefore actually makes it a breeze when it comes to doing, let's say, a three-point turn or any sort of complex parking maneuvers. Indeed, here, the vehicle feels very much accustomed to any sort of hatchback or SUV, and from someone who doesn't drive vans or larger size vehicles, at least of this class regularly, I can say I certainly felt at ease and didn't feel that I was uneasy while driving or indeed doing any sort of complex maneuvers in the tight streets of London. So with all that in mind, it brings us onto our verdict. And quite frankly, nothing really competes with the VW ID Buzz, purely because none of its alternatives take its nostalgic design and bring it into the modern era thanks to a fully electric powertrain. Then of course, you've got class leading boot capacity, rear occupancy space, and also very fun driving dynamics, thanks to its rear wheel drive configuration, which we suspect will take actually many by surprise. However, there are certain things that actually let it down. The use of technology within the cabin and the choice of materials are quite disappointing. The fact that you do not have a seven-seater option, at least at the time of filming, will be pretty disheartening to some. And of course, and more importantly, its 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, which combines with no heat pump, is certainly no match to some of the alternatives, even from the likes of Volkswagen Group, be it in terms of SUVs or even in terms of the hatchback class. So really, what will say is that yes this vehicle is very unique it certainly does stand out and will certainly have that tick box for certain individuals if however you're not too fond or really care about the VW camper van design or need the sheer amount of space at the back then you should consider some of the larger size all-electric SUVs some of which we've reviewed and will be down in the description below for your own consideration so what do you make of the ID Buzz? Let us know down in the comment section below and or if it's something that you'd actually splash out on if you had the money. Now, if you've liked this independent detail review, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been Chris from Totally EV and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.